Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm Brian, this is Warren, and Hello. we are here to present Show and Smell. This is our fourth time presenting Show and Smell, but it's our first in an international country, so thank you for having us. We're very happy to be here. Thank you. So, for the next 40 minutes or so, we're going to talk about new technologies related to sensory marketing and how we can connect these with human behavior, make them easy enough that humans want to adopt them and make them part of their everyday lives. And so, we've seen in studies, groups exposed to multi-sensory environments always outperform those in unisensory environments. Their recall is better in terms of quantity of information remembered and clarity of it. And so for brand marketers who are in a crowded, competitive marketplace, using sensory marketing could act as a critical advantage. So we're going to move on and talk about our first sense, which is smell. And smell is one of the most important senses because it's the only that bypasses the thalamus and goes directly to the brain. We're hardwired for scent reception. And so this makes this sense one of the most important for us. And it's the reason why scent marketing industry has grown considerably over the past 10 years. And today it is a $300 million industry. So now I'm going to turn it over to Warren, who's going to talk about where the scent market industry started. At uh, some of the previous sessions we've had, we've actually incorporated a device that fills the room with scent. And Air Essentials is one of the companies that uh, has this technology. Uh, we weren't able to bring it with us today, but what this does is it, it changes an entire environment using scent to create uh, a different kind of experience. For example, in the U.S., uh, they, they, you go into a store, maybe a jewelry store or an auto store or some, some place at a commercial department store, you will have different scents that you may not even be aware of. You're just aware that you feel good in that place. And in the U.S., it might be cinnamon, it might be vanilla. Uh, here in Europe, um, things like um, verbona, white, bamboo, uh, green tea, uh, lemon, lemon tea, green grass lemon tea, uh, our scents that are common uh, here in Europe. So a little bit of a different dichotomy there between the, uh, Europe and U.S. as far as uh, scents that are popular. But what that does is it creates this, this uh, very relaxing feeling in this place, puts you at ease. Mm -hmm. And the example behind us, um, casinos would use it in smoking areas so that it smelled more pleasant. And they noticed that uh, receipts for slot machines were up over 50% in areas where it smelled better than yeah. when it yeah. didn't. Yeah. So that was the macro, going to a large public space. Then coming down to uh, your own personal space, this is a really cool device called Senti. You plug it into your uh, portable device, and when you get a text or uh, uh, an email, you can set it for different flavors or scents. So, <laughs> so it's somebody you don't like, you might put a very uh, bad scent in there, and you might not want to answer it. But it's really a fun thing, and it just points out the, uh, the importance of scent in our, in our lives and how we can use that in technology and experience. Mm -hmm. And moving forward with scents, um, at a previous conference, we developed software to link Twitter with two normal bubble machines. And so people were able to tweet um, a specific hashtag with the smell either grape or cherry, and every tweet counted as a vote. And so it was a competition. And so certain people were voting cherry, certain people were voting grape. And, that's, and the best part about it was not only were you able to see who was winning, but you were able to smell who was winning as well. And so it was a great thing that yeah, it's really fun. interacted with a, a digital component and then sight and smell and touch. So touch, you, this is important, you have more tactile receptors in your little finger than you have in your entire back, which is crazy when you compare the two. But in past studies, they've noticed that people who are holding a warm beverage when they meet someone new are more likely to like that person than when they're holding a cold beverage. They think they're friendlier for whatever reason. So I hope all of you have warm beverages in your hand as we talk about this next, te next technology, which we helped develop. We were, um, everyone's familiar with Wired Magazine, right? Every, yep, yep, you know what? Uh, we were contacted uh, uh, about a year and a half ago by a um, company we work with on occasion, and they um, were trying to come up with an ad for this phone. Everyone's heard of uh, the Google Moto X phone, possibly? 
maybe not so much in Europe. In the States, it was pretty big. Um, the interesting thing about this phone is you could order it with all these different cases. You didn't have to go buy a secondary case. You could actually get whatever, whatever custom color you wanted. And they wanted to communicate in Wired Magazine that you could do this. So what they had come up with is this ad page, and they wanted it to change color. Every time you pressed one of the buttons at the bottom, um, you'd get to pick your color for your phone. The only problem is they prototyped it, and they did a limited production run to try and uh, discuss it with their, their teams, but they couldn't figure out how to mass produce it. So they came to us to help figure that out. We do a lot of very mass production of uh, very inexpensive electronics. So we uh, were able to help them work that out. Um, I'm going to step over here a little bit, maybe out of the spotlight a little bit. So say you wanted, uh, the way this would work is you would get this and open it up in your Wired magazine. And say you wanted to check out, well, what's the blue phone like? So you press it. And turn on the power here. And you get a nice blue phone. Isn't that nice? So say, oh, I don't know, I'd like the green one. So you try to get the green one. Pretty fantastic. Never been done before. Um, I liked purple, actually, purple, kind of nice. So this, if you uh, do a search, uh, you can find, just search uh, Google Moto X. Um, light up ad. I think it had like a million hits as far as people. And there was a great, uh, I think Gizmag did a great um, uh, uh, kind of little uh, thing where they took it apart and showed all the interior parts of it and things. So it's really good fun to see. But um, just an example of creating an entirely unexpected surprise when you open a, a page and find something like a, an ad page that just comes alive. Um, Ericsson has a um, great technology. We're, this, we're going to be in a, a section here about capacitance touch. Like um, our, our tablets and uh, cell phones all have capacitance touch screens. And what that's done, it's opened up a lot of possibilities of interacting print technologies with those uh, platforms. So in this case, the Ericsson, what they've done is the phone on the right has a, uh, a special capacitance sensor built in the back of it. So while you're holding that phone and come over with your other hand and touch, say, a, uh, a package, that package has a special label that's been printed with inks that have like their, their own pattern. So when you touch that label with one hand and you're holding your phone in the other, you're actually completing the communication between your phone and that package. And that package actually has a code in it that the app in your phone is detected and uh, can open up the information about that particular product, maybe give you some recipes, uh, some other very useful information. So again, another interesting way on how touching an object can open up all this different kind of experience and information. Mm -hmm. This one, <laughs> we, we saw this at uh, South by Southwest, and we really were impressed. Um, you go into your supermarket, and uh, you come up to, um, say, a stand full of tomatoes and, and, and vegetables. And you come up and touch one of the tomatoes, and the farmer that grew it will start telling you about his organic farm and why his, uh, his produce is so fresh. Um, basically, there's underneath that tom the tomato and the onions is a small uh, conductive ring that when you touch the tomato, again, the capacitance in your, um, in your hand is being triggering a sound module, which is then triggering the, uh, the recorded sound. It's really fun. I mean, just a, another way where you can just take something like a, a, a vegetable and turn it into a sound, a sound device. Mm -hmm. Make your kids either excited to eat vegetables or very scared to eat vegetables. Are very scared, <laughs> yes. Another aspect of touch, which we're going to show you, hopefully this prototype will work. Let's open this up. And uh, this operates on capacitance as well. This is not NFC. This is not uh, RFID. These, these cards just have a, a printed, tech, a printed conductive ink. And if this all works properly, when I touch this to the tablet, it breaks open. There's a little sound there, too, but it didn't come through. Uh, but it can actually sense the code that's printed on this card and then opens up the app. Now, it could also launch a music. It could uh, deliver various types of content. 
And again, these just are playing cards with a, uh, a conductive material on them. So another way of providing a low cost printed interactivity where these could be direct mail pieces, these could be uh, on a cup, you know, various ways to deliver uh, an interesting little plus up to open up some content. I think our next piece of technology is one of my favorites. So we're gonna have Warren talk a little bit about how you can make this happen. Yeah, this, um, uses uh, like connect um, as far as the interactivity um, with ca capturing camera in motion and it's, uh, the, the physical nature of it is uh, projection mapping. So what is happening here is the uh, connect camera is capturing the sandbox and then projecting a terrain into the environment. So these, as you go in there as a child you're going in and scooping up making mountains or maybe scooping out sand and creating depressions. And the uh, Connect is actually then projecting uh, either mountains and or filling in the, the scooped out areas as lakes and things. So you're getting almost this real time topography going on. Mm -hmm. Really fun, really fun. And th there are things you go online and find uh, how to do this yourself if you're so inclined. Mm -hmm. Because when I was growing up, all you needed was a shovel and a bucket. But now kids these days need a little bit more to stay entertained, it seems. Thin film, this is a very interesting uh, technology from thin film using uh, NFC, near field communication labels, where the, um, and it's used on a lot of high end uh, alcohol liquor products right now, where counterfeiting is a, a large problem. So this, this label actually uh, gives three levels of service. It's one, anti counterfeiting, two, uh, when you're in the store and as a consumer you come and touch your phone to that product and your phone will it, it will launch an app and tell you about the product. It could even, if it's wine, tell you when it was vinted, what, uh, what grapes were used. Then when you get it home and you open up the, uh, the bottle, it could also then tell you various types of recipes or uh, various other things that you might, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's games, games to go along with celebrating with your friends. Um, but it's very interesting the way something like a, a printed electronics um, uh, label could actually function in three different levels, you know, from the same from the same label. It's very very interesting what they're doing with that. Mm -hmm. And as someone whose phone is constantly dying, uh, this is probably the most useful piece of technology for me. We have uh, been following um, wireless power, uh, inductive charging for some time. Uh, this is very uh, typical of like the little um, uh, wireless toothbrush you might have where there's no plugs or anything. You just set the toothbrush in the, in the holder and it uh, charges with inductive power. We've been following this and we're so happy to see that IKEA was one of the first uh, major companies to embrace this for the uh, consumer market for private homes. We had heard about it um, being used in applications like for... Um, uh, airports or various types of public spaces, restaurants, but it's good to see that uh, IKEA has come out. And this is a line of things right from their catalog. The uh, top left has a couple of lamps and the little plus sign is where you place your phone. And you can see the top right, uh, you're placing the phone on the plus sign, leaving it and the phone begins to charge. Uh, it does require your phone being equipped with a uh, built-in charger or there are secondary uh, devices that you can get. Uh, this is an example. You just would plug this and get the appropriate plug. This is for an Apple product. And you would plug this into the uh, regular charging uh, port on your phone, set it down, and it would charge. And um, you can see variety. What I like about it is uh, when you see the, um, the middle one there where they're baking, um, you can imagine you know, having to charge your phone, not having to worry about wires, and if you're in an uh, environment where there's dust or something like that, it's totally without wires or, or connections. Mm -hmm. And while they brought wireless power to the home, it actually started with automobiles. Yeah, we've been following uh, where this started back in uh, like 2011, 2012, and they were beginning to apply these wireless chargers into the center console on select automobiles. And when this started happening, we also heard that uh, there's going to be a movement towards bringing it into public spaces and then possibly even to our homes, which we're happy to hear that IKEA has come and already accomplished. 
Um, but you can see how this is ramping up to uh, you know late uh, 2016 to 2018. Uh, hopefully, we'll see more and more of the severe cars. I don't know about you, but you know when I'm fumbling around to try I have two maybe two different phones, the right charger, where the right you know connectors to plug in. It's a bit frustrating. It'd be nice to just set the phone there and let it charge. Mm -hmm. And I bet you all recognize this little guy right here. Our minion. Um, as we said, we, we, one of our uh, core businesses is toy and toy development. <clears throat> and one of the things we were very um, interested in is when wireless power charging services become ubiquitous in our environment, we have these power sources. Could we make a toy that doesn't have batteries? A toy that just comes to life when you place it on a wireless charging surface. Unfortunately, this, uh, when we bring these prototypes and samples out on the road, especially internationally, sometimes they, they don't survive. So um, the power supply for this demo did not survive, and we apologize. But um, normally when it is plugged in and we place this uh, toy on here, he comes to life and his little hands shake up and down. That he's so happy that his, his power has been turned on. But uh, I apologize. He broke. The power supply let us down. Um, but the other good news is um, we had uh, recognized the potential for this and applied for a patent a couple of years ago on the concept, and the patent has been granted. So if anyone wants to make any toys that come to life when uh, placed on a wireless inductive power surface, come talk to us. We'll, mm. uh, <laughs> we can make toys with you. Mm. And this little toy is pretty cool because it has to do with touch, but it also has to do with hearing. So studies have found that slow music creates longer dining times causing people to spend a little bit more while they're at the restaurant. And so you may think, as a restaurant owner, you want to play upbeat music to pe keep people happy and keep them eating. Um, people have found that it's actually quite the opposite of that. Look, we got some more minions for you, so. We have plenty of minions, <laughs> don't worry. Um, we were, one of the things we do is, is, is you, you're going to see a lot of very cool technology that interacts um, with um, tech, various mobile devices. One of the things we do in our core business too is looking at very simple types of technologies that, well, they look simple on the, on the surface, but there's a lot of uh, technology and safety behind them. Um, this is a straw topper. This is a little guy that you can, uh, little minion, you probably can't see him, but he's just placed uh, on the top of the straw. And when you switch him on and you put him in, so when a child comes to drink, Oh, maybe. Do we have any sound? <laughs> so that's that guy. And then we have the evil minion. Come on, that was the good yeah, guy. Watch we out have for the evil minion. minion. Here's, the, here's the evil minion who's chomping on, on the straw. <laughs> See, the good and the bad. <laughs> But again, this is, uh, what's interesting here is um, these are two uh, d little electronic devices. We actually have a patent app applied for on this uh, that can sense the uh, change in um, uh, the field of the liquid going through the straw. And then the, the other nice thing is you can just take the straws out and replace them so kids can play with it and they, they don't have to share the straws. Now this, we're going to do a little bit of an experiment here. It's a little bit of audience participation. You guys ready? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now just uh, all should go as planned here. No one gets hurt. It's totally <laughs> safe. Okay. Now we are going to ask, we're going to, what we're going to be demonstrating is this panel projects sound like a light beam. And so it may... Uh, as it's, we're going to move this panel in, around the room, and we just ask, when you hear it the strongest, raise your hand, and we'd like to just see how the, the, the sound wave moves throughout the audience, and just by raising your hand, we'll, we'll detect that, and we'll just kind of get a, it might be a fun thing for us to all to see how this works. We've all done the wave before, this will be something <laughs> with sound. Okay. Get this. Okay. Okay, that side of the room. One more. 
Not That's bad. a riddle. I tried bouncing it off the ceiling. Not really too much. So it's very directional. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for playing. <laughs> this, this technology was developed um, by Dr. Joseph Pompey, who originally out of MIT, <clears throat> and he now uh, runs a company called uh, Sonics, and the product is called Audio Spotlight. It's mainly uh, sold for um, like museums. You can think of areas where you want to project a specific sound directly. Uh, it may be in front of an exhibit. Mm -hmm. So we're not done with all of our experiments yet. We'd like to do another little test and see if okay. this app, Google Translate, is as accurate as we think it is. We hope this works. Okay. So this app you can speak into, and it will translate it in real time, um, which is really useful for us as we're traveling to a country we've never been to before. Hello, we're very happy to be here today. Hello, we're very... Oh, okay, hold on. A little too eager there, but... Yep. Hello, we're very happy to be here today. Hey, we are very glad to be here today. I'm hoping that by yes. clapping that was correct and we didn't we we say anything obscene. Other, we don't have to run for the door. Good, okay, all right, okay. We were also contacted, another uh, item that we produced, this is for a um, uh, Latin American beverage company, Ambev. Uh, they have a uh, soda company, Guarna, and they wanted to do, um, use one of the technologies we had showed them, and it's basically a small transducer that um, creates sound by uh, vibrating on a panel. And replaces traditional speakers. So what it does is it en enables um, almost anything to be turned into a sound device. So they wanted to take it, sell this, and that, or market it with their uh, soda, and then put it to like a uh, 24 case. So what we're going to do is come over to this poster, which is just a, a piece of foam board. And if all goes correctly, it did in rehearsals. <laughs> We're going to go with, <laughs> here we go. This is the one we wanted. You can dance if you want to. Yep. And uh, so it's silent. Touch it. So it's really a fun uh, way of taking any object and turning it into a speaker. And I know there's a lot of products that are starting to come on the market now, but we recognize this pretty early, uh, five, six years ago, and we're working with uh, uh, UK company NXT. I think they have since then gotten into um, uh, other types of uh, commercial space with this. I don't think they're still supporting this. But the other thing, we did test this in focus, grouping, uh, gr focus groups with um, young children, and they, they would take like cereal boxes and boxes and stack them up and have experiments to see could they make them louder, uh, having great fun. So it's a great thing with kids to get them uh, excited about the way sound works. We found it was really kind of fun. And now we are very excited because we have a special guest for you all. So please welcome Dr. Kate to the stage. Hello. <laughs> um, right, I showed some of this to maybe half the people not very long ago, so I'm so sorry you got to see me again. But, <laughs> um, right, I'll try and be quick. Um, yeah, so I make paper interactive. Um, 
So let me show you some things. If I can find my batteries. Thanks for having me join oh, you. It's a pleasure to have you. <laughs> it's really good. So one of the first things is kind of similar to that actuator over there with NXT's transducer, transducer which is stuck on the back here. So this poster of a drum kit, um, I'll just put that behind. Can you hear? Just place it, just push it on the poster. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what we do is... I always have so many bits of paper and technology. I'm terrified it's going to go wrong, and there's so much I can't hold it all at the same time. We print conductive ink on the surfaces of pieces of paper, and then we can put beautiful graphics over the top of that ink. And that ink adds capacitive touch to any surface. Um, and then onto that, we stick a small circuit board that has a chip that runs some software to, to enable the touch. And then that chip also either connects to a speaker and adds sound to the piece of paper, or it has Bluetooth on it, so the piece of paper, whatever size it could be, we can do as large as a bus shelter or as small as a postcard, that piece of paper is now connected to your smartphone and so can connect through to the internet. Or we also do another module that has a Wi-Fi chip on, so now every piece of print that's all around you potentially, could all be connected to each other and to you and, and on the internet. And it's kind of part of this dream that the future will look more like the past than the present, and that everyday objects around us will all be connected to, to, to um, each other, but they become our portal through to the digital world. Um, and it's something we're trying to make available as a kit as well. So we print, we print these stickers that anyone can buy and stick them onto any surface stick the module on and then add their own sounds on and start to play with it because we're trying to create a platform but what we're really excited about is the things that other people might create with it that we haven't even dreamt of. Um, one of the things we did was a Disney toy. So um, Disney came to us and told us about one of their shows, Princess Sophia. And Princess Sophia has a magical amulet that lets her talk to objects and things around her. So we added some of our magic into that and we kind of made that magical amulet really come to life. Um, like a bit of tech that I always get nervous might not work because on a stage it's very scary. <laughs> I don't mean you're scary, I just mean <laughs> all of the noisy technology is scary. <laughs> This is my notebook, and um, I said my bad joke earlier on, but why are notebooks called notebooks? And it's because they play notes. <laughs> um, I'm a scientist, and I can't play piano, but... <laughs> I'll just show this. Now. Oh, my gosh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm also not a DJ, but I like to pretend I'm a DJ, and I did it once on stage, and then DJ Cubert, who's probably the best scratch DJ in the world, saw that and asked me to make his album cover. And so we made this beautiful album cover. It has wonderful vinyl in, if anyone wants to see it afterwards, it is. I say it's divine because it's just so beautiful. <laughs> um, but we made the world's thinnest DJ decks. Snoop Doggy Dog. I love a bit of Snoop Dogg. <laughs> and so... Okay, I'm stuck in a loop. Um, and you can, you can actually scratch, so you can spin the record back if you want to. Um, and it's, yeah, so I guess my part is just to show that through using printing, which is everywhere, and it's uh, its most perverse, pervasive user interface. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, sometimes I should think I could be a comedian, because I go on the stage and I just say <laughs> the wrong things by mistake, and people laugh at me, <laughs> not with me. <laughs> Ha <laughs>
Yeah. So, yeah, so it's using print, which is everywhere, to allow everyday things to sort of be our portal to the digital world. And I see a future that's going to look magical and more like the past than the present. So, yeah, thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone, a round of applause for Kate. <laughs> So she just gave us a little taste of interactive posters, which leads us to a good segue for taste. Absolutely. Um, and so this is something that is kind of cool because you all will be able to see this at the end of the show. That's right. We have arranged for, uh, and when you leave the uh, auditorium, there are uh, a few tables where the uh, lunches were just outside the door here. And we have arranged for some samples of these tongue tattoos. So everyone on your way out, please stop. Um, what we, what we, we included this because it's so fun. It, it's, it's sight and it's also taste. And um, we just think it's a very interesting way of communicating. And we, we do hope over the course of the next day or two while we're around that we do see these starting to show up. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> there will be a test. There will be a test. But uh, please enjoy. Um, just, just another way of, again, adding uh, a, a fun experience where you wouldn't expect to have that, you know, communication and experience. And there's multiple flavors, so it's like a little, little surprise when you put it That's on your tongue. Right. That's right. And they do, they're not permanent. They are not permanent. Okay. <laughs> So At least we on. were told they're not perfect. <laughs> so moving on from that, we have something that kind of looks futuristic in the background, but it's this ultrasonic vaporization technique that creates edible mist that you could suck up through a straw. And so it comes, it comes in over 180 different flavors. So if you're a person who likes a chocolate biscuit or a banana yeah. milkshake or basil, uh, then all you have to do is go find one of these orbs, get a straw, Inhale the mist, and it's zero calories, so you don't have to worry about that at all. Yeah. It's very healthy. Uh, <laughs> but it's just, it's just kind of interesting, because it's something that looks out of a sci-fi movie, but they've created it, and they, it's very... It's fantastic. It's fantastic yeah. and yeah. popular. So if, if you see one, I suggest you go and pick a good flavor. So uh, moving on to C... Um, we have another demonstration that Warren is going to show you, and that is color-changing straws. You know, in our, our marketing and um, communication work, obviously, we uh, sight is, is so uh, essential. And I've talked to a couple of you here and you have publishers, and seeing and sight is, is so important to what we do. Um, sight also for us is an opportunity to, de to delight. And... Um, just something as simple as drinking straws. You know, I brought uh, this, this cluster of them here. So you get a beverage, um, you're drinking your, your iced, you know, um, spill a little water on stage, I think it'd be okay. <laughs> and if I take them out, and keep some of the ice in there. You see all the different colors? I don't know if you can see them. Um, color change in oh. itself is not uh, all that new, but the, um, the way we accomplish it is, uh, what we are doing is we work with uh, material scientists to look at um, new mechanisms, new ways of affecting the color change. Uh, many of our clients have uh, very strict demanding uh, rules on what can go into things like a straw or a toy. So we're constantly looking at new ways of making you know, a color change effect happen. So yeah, it looks like something you can probably buy at the local um, novelty store, which you can, but these um, are incredibly uh, safe, use very benign materials. So we just wanted to talk about that. And in addition, I mean, this is um, you know, it, something that we actually put right into you know, things like, you know, drinking beverage uh, cups, you know, as well. So, immediate color change. You know, it's safe. Mm. And colorful. Yeah. Also, with, um, with seeing, uh, Megaprint, um, many of you might know of, 
Miko Prep, excuse me, um, has developed uh, a line of uh, printed uh, organic solar cells, and this is one of them. This is a flexible solar cell, and I'll see if I can't illuminate this from behind. I don't know if you can, you can see the light behind it, right? So it's somewhat transparent. When I um, hold the light to the front, the LED begins to flash. I don't know if you saw that. A little LED up here starts to flash. So it's being powered by the, this uh, flexible plastic solar cell. There's no battery, it's just direct drive. And our interest here is the possibility that this could be like an out, outdoor table topper at a restaurant or something like that. And maybe as the technology evolves, this could be possibly an indoor piece in an aisle in a store so that the actual store lighting might light up the sign to tell you about something going on or a new promotion. The whole idea of energy harvesting, to use existing energy in the environment to power things so we don't need to uh, put batteries on uh, devices like that. Ah, uh, hard cam. Everyone's probably familiar uh, with augmented reality, um, the uh, use of your portable device pointed at a target that, uh, in a, a program to, um, to create an image from your, uh, from your device. This, I don't know if this is, um, is going to work or how I'm going to be able to show this very well, but <clears throat> this pail has uh, this same little heart cam on the front that you're looking at. So I'm going to point this tablet at it. I don't know how many in the front you can see it. You see the beating heart? <laughs> So the skeleton pail now has a, uh, a pretty frightening beating heart. All of those in the back believe it. it's really it's really there, it's really there. <laughs> They're not lying. <laughs> not lying. But let's say um, you know for our, our young ones at home, our kids, we want something a little less frightening. So we just change it to uh, a Valentine heart. So now we see the skeleton really likes us. So see that? Isn't that kind of fun. So just by changing, uh, you know, how the app will respond. Mm -hmm. A little bit on augmented reality brought to books. Now, this is another example, which we might not have time to show, but I'll see if it'll load pretty quickly. Um, augmented reality for, for children's books. I'll just see if it'll load up here real quick. If not, we will just move on, because we have a lot of very cool stuff to, to talk about. This is the app. Yes, I think it's going to load. So we have this construction machines book, and we point it at the cover. And I don't know if you can see the front row again. Sorry, all you folks in the back. Sorry about that. Um, you can see the cover of the book now has a, uh, a front end loader that is attached to the cover of the book. And when you go through, each page has a different piece of construction equipment, and you can uh, interact. Isn't that cool? And you probably have seen this before, uh, many of you. But it's just an, a, another way that the devices that we're carrying now can interact with printed media in ways that we couldn't even thought of several years ago. Mm -hmm. And what's exciting about a lot of these technologies is people have figured out how to do it themselves at home, which is especially true for this next piece, which is a projection pyramid. These are, um, if you go online, you can find these devices um, or plans on how to do this. This is actually the simplest execution. Um, get you know, four pieces of uh, triangular clear plastic, build it into a pyramid shape, cut the top off, and then just lay it um, on, your, on your tablet or your phone. You have to download the app, but um, I'm just getting my uh, demo video here. So, are we have any Beatles fans here, Yellow Submarine fans, I hope. Uh, and again, uh, you folks in the front row have just lucked out. Uh, sorry about the... I don't know if you can see this. It's like a holographic image of the submarine. Yeah. 
And this is just basically a transparent pyramid, just transparent plastic. And the, um, the app we've created is just taking uh, 3D computer images of the submarine in and twisting them to create the illusion of like a Princess Leia being projected in Star Wars, that sort of uh, illusion. So now we'll probably have to move a little bit quickly because yes. I, okay. I think we're running out of time. Okay. Um, another thing you will find outside. Oh, by the way, about the straws, you will find straws out there as well. So please take one. We brought a thousand of them. Please take one. Um, things like uh, virtual reality, Oculus Rift, uh, very expensive um, immersive experiences, Google Cardboard. Um, you've all heard of, uh, heard of this. Um, Basically, you get this uh, little thing. It's a little cardboard kit. Open it up. You get this little origami fold-together viewer. It folds into this, has two lenses, and you drop your smartphone into the thing, and immediately the split screen, you get an immediate uh, three-dimensional immersive experience. Yeah, you can the, fly in a plane, go through oh, the mountains. Yeah. The accelerometer on your phone knows when your head's tilting, which direction you're going, so you're actually turning in the environment. So um, we brought a few of these. We don't have a lot. If you want to look at them, again, they're out on the table. A lot of straws, a lot of tongue tattoos. Please use them. Not very many of these, so um, please uh, take a look. But what Google's done, Google's also made that available online. If you wanted to go online and get your own cardboard, you can cut them out. You just have to find some lenses, but uh, just amazing. So now we're going to move on to some technology that kind of combines a lot of different senses. So we're calling this the sixth sense. And we're going to hope these work. That's always the hope that they work. <laughs> but they're prototypes, so you have to expect for the worst. So this is an um, interesting device wristband with a motion sensor and a low-power Bluetooth. So if this all works properly, I'm going to show you my ninja moves. Okay? He's got great ninja moves. Yes. I promise not to hurt you. <laughs> This is MOF, and uh, you know, just the whole idea of just being able to bring a uh, motion sensor in with, low, with the uh, Bluetooth connectivity to your device, great fun. Oh, it's, uh, really, you, know, you can then go into the app. In case you don't want to be a ninja, you could, you could be someone else. So go in, and let's say we're going to do guitar. Perfect. Or, just to end on a quieter note, we just do a little magic. Good luck to everybody. He's throwing magic at all of oh, you. It's, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good technology magic. <laughs> So moving on, now we're going to talk about Muse, which is a headband. Muse is pretty interesting. It's a, going back to the aspect of uh, biofeedback and meditation. Muse, um, you would wear this head device, um, and it gives you biofeedback based you know, upon your um, uh, electromagnetic rhythms. And you can also set sound to help you uh, relax. You can set, uh, I believe, a color as well, all to... Uh, change your uh, mood, alter your experience. Again, that sixth sense. Mm -hmm. and we're going to move past this one because we only have a couple minutes, okay. but um, uh, Google yep. just released uh, unofficially a new version of Google Glass, which is specifically for business after uh, they weren't really sure what to do with the first kind. But it, yeah. it's all related to augmented reality and virtual reality, and it's very cool technology. But now we're going to talk a bit about 3D printing, which we are very excited about. Yeah, I mean, we just, just a quick slide here of where it was not too long ago, you know, when this was uh, magic and still, still is in a way, you know, 20, 25 years ago. Uh, what's happened, though, is a lot of those patents have expired. And what that's allowed is the proliferation now of all, a whole new generation of lower-cost 
um, machines. As the next, we go to the next one, yeah. Uh, the upper left are two of the machines we use uh, at our, our facility. Uh, we can print uh, very uh, tight dimensional models. We can also print full color models. We have in-house um, sculpting where they're uh, digital uh, force feedback sculpting tools. And the rest of these are all available commercial units that you can buy. Some of them are under $1,000 US, some of them down in the $500 category. This is a great video. One of the drawbacks of 3D printing has been how slow it's been. This is a little bit speeded up, but this is actually a new technology from Carbon 3D where the article is actually coming up out of this liquid bath. And it's actually growing as you're seeing it, and then instantly cured. I believe it's the instant curing process. Um, what does this mean, though? How, does it, how do you take it from making prototypes and um, other functional types of applications. I mean, we know about medical uh, things that are being used, you know, growing new uh, body parts, building houses, obviously building prototypes and things. There's a company called Doob, uh, started in Germany, is now an office in New York, one in uh, Los Angeles and Osaka. What they do is you go into the booth at the upper left, and in about a second it does a full scan. Each one of those little dots in the back is a camera, and they have arrays of those all around. So within that second or less, you're captured 360 degrees. And then at the right, you have a technician that takes that data cloud, starts to clean it up, and uh, enhances the color. And then at the bottom uh, right, you can see some of the actual figs. This is actually a fig of me that was done, so it's uh, much shorter, uh, a lot lighter. Um, one of the interesting things, though, where we talk about um, the experience of this 3D printing, this new way of looking at yourself is it's a bit unreal to see a miniaturization of yourself that was done so photorealistically. It's a, a, a bit uh, a different experience. And so what that does is it opens up the question, well, what could we do with that, say, in, in the environment uh, for 3 retail? And one of the things <clears throat> that this uh, Japanese company, uh, Muji, has done is um, they're based in Japan, but they have uh, department stores all over the, the world. They are noted for um, having products that are related to, to travel and vacations. So what they did is they had a contest where people would um, submit entries about where they wanted to go on vacation and such. And then uh, the winners would go to a facility and get themselves uh, 3D printed. So these are, uh, on the right, are some of the winners. And you see how fun uh, some of the people uh, took the thing. I love the one, the one little suitcase in the bottom left. Somebody thought, well, that's, that's my vacation. Mm -hmm. and I like the lady at the upper right in her uh, airline seat, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the end of all the technology we're going to show you, but none of it's possible unless people are dedicated to innovation and research and development. And luckily for us at the marketing store, we're in a good place where we have a dedicated innovation center, which it's is supported, fully mm, supported. It's for yeah. traditional product yeah. development, but it it also helps us in the traditional agency sense where sense where we can, you know, learn about new technologies and try to develop them and bring them to a promotion for someone, which is the next step because people are getting tired of old promotions and you know, any sort of marketing campaign. But if you involve some sort of cool technology they've never seen before, then they're going to be more interested in your conversation and they're going to want to engage with you on a more regular basis. And from that, we just want to say thank you for attending. Uh, we appreciate all of you coming. Yes, um, you. Any questions? I guess open up for questions. Yeah. We have time. I don't know if we have any time, but I guess we'll see. Thank you. Thank you my sound on there we are now we don't have time for questions but we will break on time so no need to run um uh, i think i think i have one super brief very general question so i'm really happy that we have some marketers here now because this morning i noticed in talk after talk hearing the word capitalism said in a tone of voice i want to say for the record that we are not against private enterprise we are just for ethics right so i want to ask you guys when you come across these new technologies do you ever go that could be used for evil and if you think that then what do you do we make it do good 
<laughs> no, it's, I don't mean to be flip. Uh, some of the, I don't think we touch on things that uh, are inherently unsafe. Mm-hmm. You know, most of the things that we have are uh, things that uh, have a unique color or a unique unexpected action. They think, oh, that's interesting. You know, uh, how might that be uh, something that could, uh, you know, provide that wow, that little wow moment that makes you think about uh, uh, a new item or a new mm-hmm. a product or something. Or indeed an idea. Very good. Warren Kronberger, Brian Torbik, and of course, again, Dr. Kate Stone. Thank you. Thank you.